YouTube friends, Jenny here with my Floss Tube episode two. Even though I haven't uploaded episode one, even though it's been two weeks since I filmed it, <laughs> um, I don't tend to love the part where I have to edit things. And last time when I filmed, my phone kept shutting off halfway through and not saving anything. So I'd have to start over again and again, saying the same things again and again. Um, and then I couldn't even remember what I had covered and what I hadn't. And I ended up having to film a bunch of little clips and put them together because that was the only way my phone would work. Um, and I think it was because I had an update I hadn't installed. And we know how these devices are when they want you to install an update and you don't. Things mysteriously don't work right until you install that update. So I think that's what was going on. And hopefully this will be a better filming experience. And assuming it is, I'll go forward with Floss Tube. And what I'll do is after filming this, I'll edit both of them and I'll post one this week, one next week. And then the following week, I'll be filming and posting on the same day. So anyhow, enough of that. Let's get into the stitching because that's the fun part, right? <laughs> so I did continue work on my Newton Abbott carpet, which was the miniature project I showed you last time. And I actually didn't pull it up with me, but I'll insert a picture. Um, even though I don't like editing, I'll do that for you. I'll get over it. I'll get over my dislike of editing because I'll do it so much, I'll get comfortable with it and then I won't mind. That's my theory. <laughs> Um, so the Newton Abbott carpet, I did work on it, but it's like you can't tell because right now I'm putting very light yellow stitches next to very, very light yellow stitches. So <laughs> even though I'm making progress, it doesn't look like anything. And I think it's probably going to be a few weeks before it starts to actually be like, oh yeah, I see that progress now. Um, so that one... I'll just keep plugging away at it. But what I'm really excited about is I started my first cross-stitch project since I was a, like, a little girl, and I can't wait to show it to you. Um, I picked a free pattern from the DMC website, which is called Pink Roses Bouquet. And um, I had ordered online a Joann's order for a floor stand, which I'll talk about in a minute. And in that order, I had a gift card, so I got to do a little shopping. I got a cross-stitch kit that I'll show you in a minute, and I got this piece of 18-count Ada. Um, and I got a start, and I got really far, actually. I mean, isn't that so pretty? I absolutely love it. Um, when I first started out, I was, think I was thinking about what projects I wanted to work on. And one of my things with cross-stitching is that I couldn't think, you know, what would I want to stitch? I mean, obviously it's probably going to hang in my house, but what do I really want to hang in my house? I don't know. And I stumbled onto this pattern and I could just envision it on my sewing room wall because my sewing room is pink and I like vintagey things and this looks vintagey. So I thought it's perfect. Um, and then over the past two weeks, I have been sort of daydreaming about different things and I cannot even tell you how long my two stitch list is now. And some of it is patterns that I came across and some of it is kind of ideas I came up with that I want to see if I can chart out. But basically I've gone insane. I'm totally down the rabbit hole. I'm all in. Let's stitch it all. That's my current mood. So yeah, this is what I've been working on, my Pink Roses bouquet, and I'll put a link below uh, in case anyone wants to work the same pattern because I think it's awesome. And I also made one of these nifty vinyl fronted project cases, and I was actually making it to store another needlework project, so it's a little small for this particular frame that I have, so I'm going to have to make another one. But it was really easy to make and I really liked it and I have a lot of quilting cotton and a lot of vinyl so I think I'm actually going to make a whole bunch of them. Um, and, but this frame is kind of a weird one. I know the Q-snaps are what's popular. This is kind of an off-brand Q-snap and it's really old. <laughs> I have this and then I have an 11 by 17 actual Q-snap that I bought for a quilting class I took at a costume college and I haven't been to costume college in like I don't know a decade so this was a long time ago. And I never really used it except for that class, so I'm really glad I had it because I've decided that the Q-snap is my new favorite thing for cross-stitching at least. I kind of want to try it for needlepoint too, but I don't know about bending the needlepoint canvas. Even though it's a soft curve, I'm just not so sure that would work out. But anyhow, I'm loving the whole snap frame situation. Uh, so, okay, also in my order from Joann's, I got a floor stand. And it's here and it's hard to show, but um, I'm going to show this part of it because 
Uh, I like working needlepoint with two hands. I pass the needle with my left hand and I receive it and send it back with my right hand and so on and so forth because it lets me get in a good groove and I really enjoy that sort of thing. I like to kind of get a flow going. Um, and it's really hard to do that when you have to hold the frame because you end up passing the needle and you have to do this whole switch hands with the frame thing. So I thought the floor stand's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be hands-free, it's gonna be so great. And in theory, it's great, but Every time I need to start or end a thread, of course I need to see the back of the work and there's no like, oh, rotate or clamp, easy clamp off. I've got, I don't know if you can see it, it's controlled by these wing nuts here. So I have to like unscrew, 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 unscrew. And I actually tried it with the Q-snap or the knockoff Q-snap first. And like the Q-snap, for some reason, it gets stuck in there. I think it's because this one has a lip and it gets stuck in the groove. And it was like a nightmare trying to pull the thing out um, to flip it over. Like it should have come out. It was open plenty wide enough, but it was like stuck. And I have to change threads so frequently, so I'm not sure. And I'm wondering if maybe I could get some sort of clamp, maybe for like woodworking or something, like, you know, like a claw type clamp that I could use instead of the silly wing nuts so that I could more easily release and turn the work over and then put it back in. Gonna have to experiment. And the other thing that happened with the floor stand, I don't know where, oh, um, I put it together and when I was putting it together, I had noticed there was a crack in the one of the feet and sure enough, <laughs> it just fell apart. Like I got it all put together and I set it down and just like a piece fell off. Um, so that was a bummer. This is the F Edmonds, F.A. Edmonds maybe it is brand, Universal Craft Stand, in case you were wondering. And I chose this one because it was a decent price. I had the Joann's gift card <laughs> and it would fit my needlework, my needlepoint frames as well. Like I didn't want one that was just for like the traditional round like bamboo embroidery hoop because I never used those. And I know there's more expensive floor stands out there and I probably should have gone with one, but I just didn't want to spend literally hundreds of dollars when I'm not 100% positive I'm going to be using it. So I don't know. I took a chance on this and I know a lot of people don't like that brand. They think it's like cheap and trash and things don't tighten, but I've actually had a good experience with it. I have one of their, um, it's not a scroll frame. I can't, I'm, the name's escaping me right now, but it's the similar kind of a frame. No, it is a scroll frame. Yeah, it's a scroll frame and I haven't had any problem with it. It stays tight, it's great, I like it. I have no problem. And the floor stand, I mean, it works as advertised and that leg did fall apart, but I sent an email to the company through their contact form and I think it was 15 minutes later maybe, at the most, I had a response from someone from the company and they were like, I'm so sorry, what is your address? We'll send you a replacement. And that was less than a week ago. I just got it in the mail today. And it was free of charge, of course, and I don't know, I'm super impressed by that. Like, they're this big company, and yet they immediately responded and sent me the exact part. And it should be really easy to fix because that one leg is just attached by, like, a, I think it's a wing nut, that's what you call it, right? I'm not a woodworker. <laughs> um, so it should be really easy to swap it out. I would have already done it, except I literally just got my mail, and I wanted to film before it was way too dark for you. So right now... That was my floor stand. And the other thing I ordered in my Joann's order, I'm so excited about, it's a cross-stitch kit. Um, so my husband is a huge Star Wars fan. And there isn't a word big enough to express to you how much of a Star Wars fan he is. Like, huge doesn't cut it. Okay. <laughs> so I got this kit right here. Hopefully there's not a glare or anything. Hopefully you can see that. This kit is by, I think it's by Dimensions. I actually don't see it. Yep, yeah, Dimensions. Um, and it's obviously Star Wars. This is Luke and Princess Leia is the name of the design, but it looks like the original Star Wars movie poster. And I just saw it and thought, Glenn would love this. So I'm gonna try to like super stealthily stitch on it. Like, um, for example, Saturday and Sunday mornings, I am like an early riser. My cats want breakfast anyway, but I'm up at like six and he sleeps in. So I'm like, okay, that will be my Star Wars stitching time. And I'm hoping that I could get it done by Christmas, which I think is reasonable. Um, looking at it, I think it might actually be full coverage, which is a lot, but <laughs> it's also a 14 count, so it's pretty big, and everything you need is in the kit, of course. I mean, I've, I haven't had an embroidery kit since I was like eight, so I don't know, these are like the colors for it. They're so pretty. It's even got like this 
gold strand that I'm super excited about. I think it's going to be so much fun. The only thing I'm not pumped about, and I mean, I will show you a tiny bit of this just so you can see it, is um, the chart is in two colors, which is a real bummer because, for example, like a blue closed circle is a different thread than a pink closed circle. And I know you think, oh, well, whatever, just, you know, pay attention to the color match. But the thing is, I like to work on, I like to work my designs by printing a black and white copy of the pattern and covering the stitching that I did in a highlighter, because that way I know where I left off and I don't miss anything. It just makes it so much easier. And so I made the black and white copy of this and then I realized that about the two colors. So now I think I'm gonna have to have this color pattern out to kind of figure out my stitches and then kind of track where I'm at with the black and white printout and that's annoying. <laughs> that is gonna super a lot annoy me and I thought maybe I'll go make a color copy at the copy store but then you know will I be able to highlight over that? I don't know. I have to think on it but I'm still really excited about the design and I know Glenn's gonna freak out when he sees it so that's awesome. And I'm just gonna pause real quick and look at- I made myself some notes so I wouldn't forget what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, okay. So also, I have so many things I want to stitch now, it's actually ridiculous. Um, and one of them- I have three, okay. So this goes along with the haul theme, so I'll talk about this. I bumped into this design completely by random. Someone had posted the finished product on a Reddit post, they had stitched it up. Um, and I'm gonna put a picture in here because I didn't print this pattern in color. I have nothing beautiful to show you. But this design is called Visit Hogsmeade. And it's basically as though it's like a vintage travel poster for going to Hogsmeade. And I cannot love this more. I just immediately fell in love with it. I think it would look really pretty hanging in my living room. So I'm totally gonna stitch it. I got really excited and I um, spent like I'd say like four or five days agonizing over the fabric. I think this is going to be my problem point with cross-stitching is just agonizing over what fabric to stitch things on. So the recommended fabric was a 14 count Ada and I decided to stick with that even though I am kind of dying to try an even weave but I'm, we'll get to that. <laughs> um, and then I was just agonizing over the color. I didn't want to do white because I thought it's too much and I didn't want to go too like brown. I wanted something that was cream, but not like a yellowy acre. I was being just ridiculously particular. And I don't really have a local needlepoint store, needlework store, so I can't walk in and like see these colors and pick one out. I'm just, I've got a guess. So I used one, two, three stitch, and I basically went through all of their Zweigart and all of their Wickelt offerings <laughs> and just looked at every single potentially close color match, looked up the DMC thread match that they give you, which is so handy. If you're in this boat and you're trying to figure out colors, one, two, three stitches your front. Um, and I had my real thread DMC chart and I was comparing it and that's my dad calling. Okay, sorry about that. Today is actually my dad's birthday and I had called him earlier and that was him calling me back so I didn't want to miss that call. Um, except we talked for a while and it's probably too dark to film now and I can't remember what I was talking about so I know I talked about Star Wars and I think I was going to tell you about the other projects that I had come up with that I'm dying to do um, and one of them I was going through some old needle workbooks just to see what I had out of curiosity because I was pretty sure I might have had some cross stitch things and I did I have this one exotic butterflies charted designs and this one's pretty old I think I maybe bought this in like 90s early copyright 1991 and I don't know why I bought it I guess maybe I thought I was gonna do cross stitching although I don't remember thinking that so I don't know but I had to look through it and I actually really fell for this butterfly right here I don't think it's technically a butterfly though I actually hold on I flag the page it is a sunset moth okay let me butcher some scientific words here um chrysoridia madagascarensis there we go. <laughs> um, but I just love it because it, it's just so colorful and pretty. And in my mind's eye, I saw like a little pin cushion made with the butterfly on it. So I think I might do that or maybe I'll do it and frame it. I don't know. And uh, I had a lot of colors. I had a couple of the actual colors and then a couple that were really close. So this is like a low cost project because I already have what I need. So I think I'm going to do that. And then um, I had a whole bunch of random ideas and I'm just sort of like writing them all down. But I don't think I'm quite ready to chart my own designs. I'm just, you know, getting my feet wet again. 
but I was just looking through random vintage cross stitch patterns and booklets on online just to like daydream and get ideas and I came across one Holly Hobby and I'll put a picture in here so you can see it. Um, I don't know how many of you are going to be the right age to remember Holly Hobby. Uh, she was kind of a thing when I was really little and the minute I saw it and every time I see anything Holly Hobby I immediately think of being a kid and visiting my dad and hanging out and playing with my siblings in the little playroom downstairs and it's because my older sister had a holly hobby kitchen set which i'll also see if i can find a picture of if anyone is maybe selling a vintage one so that you'll have a reference um, and it just i don't know every time i see holly hobby it immediately takes me back to that time and place and makes me feel happy um and now my mom is calling <laughs> okay back again I had to take that call because actually my granny, she's 96 years old and she has COVID right now, but she's fully vaccinated and boosted. So she's feeling really kind of just junky and laggy. and It's just not fun, um, but we think she's going to be fine. So that's good. But it was my mom calling with an update, so I couldn't miss that call either. So I'm sorry about that. But anyhow, I'm really losing light now, so I'm going to wrap it up fast. But I think I was telling you about Holly Hobby and how it has these, um, brings up these great childhood memories. And I have this open wall on my sewing room. I have a little sewing room and I have this big wall that I've just been saving. <laughs> it's just empty because I wanted to like do sort of like a collage of different framed things that make me happy or inspire me. And some of the things I have are just pretty things that I really love. Like I have a couple of I actually have enough uh, fashion plates from the 19th century to probably wallpaper the whole room, but I have a couple that I really love. So I'm gonna frame those. And I have like a collection of vintage enamel pins that I'm gonna put in like a shadow box frame. And then the pink roses. I have a couple little pieces of art that I've picked up through like art and photographs and things that I picked up on trips my husband and I have been on. So I have all these things I need to pick from and put on this wall. Um, and so when I, saw the holly hobby i could just imagine it on that wall because it would bring back all these happy memories all the time and i think i want to kind of lean more towards things like that that have all these positive feelings with it instead of just pretty things i want a mix of the two um, so i'm going to do the holly hobby i had some of the colors but i had to place had to place a one two three stitch order because i needed a piece of the cloth for the visit hogs meeting. i think i already told you that I'm sorry, I'm being repetitive, all these interruptions. Um, uh, so I was already placing an order, so I was like, all right, I'll get the last few colors that I need for Holly Hobby too. But I was looking around in my stash and I realized I had this um, Monaco. It's an even weave fabric by DMC. It's 28 count, the color is tea dyed, so it's a little beigey. Um, I probably would have rather have it be a little like white or off white, but this doesn't cost anything because it's in my stash, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> I don't know why I bought this. I did for a while do some Bargello or Flame Stitch as it's called, and I'm wondering if I bought it during my Bargello phase, <laughs> um, which is ongoing. I pick it up every now and then and do a little bit more. It's slow going. I seem to really be drawn to these needle crafts that require full coverage. <laughs> so it should be no surprise that both the Star Wars and the Visit Hogmeade are full coverage. Look at me go. <laughs> Um, but anyhow, I'm going to use this for cross stitch because I really wanted to try cross stitching on even weave and see if I like it as much as the Ada, more than the Ada, who knows. So I'm going to do the Holly Hobby on this. And I think the tea dyed will work for her because she's got that like vintage country thing going anyway. So I think it will really work. So I think that was all my notes I had. Let me consult my iPad. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I had to talk to you about <laughs> this week. And I'm sorry if you're hearing noise. My cat is going crazy playing with some toys right now. And this has just been a crazy episode. Hopefully they won't all be this crazy. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. Happy stitching, friends. And I will be back in, I think, probably a week from when you view this with episode number three. So we'll see what I get done and how many new starts I have by then. All right.